When you walk through the storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, there's a golden sky and the sweet silver song of the lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain though your dreams be tossed and blown walk on walk on with faith in your heart and you'll never walk alone you never walk alone walk on walk Hello everybody and welcome to this Saturday morning edition of the Copite Church. A gathering and a program for all those who love Liverpool Football Club, its players, its magnificent players, managers, coaching team, youth team and the city of Liverpool. And as we've sung that wonderful song, You'll Never Walk Alone. Let's remember today as well and honour once more the memory of Jerry Marston, of Jerry and the Pacemakers, who sadly passed away a couple of weeks ago. And, and we thank him for the wonderful, wonderful rendering of You'll Never Walk Alone. And this is a tough year for Liverpool Football Club. It's a tough year for the people of Liverpool. And once again, sadly, there's no 12th man there. At least not in physical form at Anfield or at the away matches. And, you know, we're all very aware of that. We're aware that Liverpool's had a tough year maintaining the excellence and their true position at the top of the tree. And we know, though, above all at this time, that we need that haven of rest, which is only to be found in Jesus himself. Here's the song. My soul inside exile was out on life's sea. So burdened with sin and distressed till I heard a sweet voice saying make me your choice and I entered the haven of rest have I hid my soul in the haven of rest I'll sail the white sea no more The tempers may sweep Oh, the wild stormy deep But in Jesus I'm safe evermore I yielded myself To his tender embrace And faith Taking hold of the word, my fetters fell, and I anchored my soul. The haven of rest is my Lord. Have I made my soul? In the heaven of 
Jesus, I'm safe and I'm all in Jesus. I'm safe and I'm all in And here we are. Here he is. David is coming up uh, now, aren't you? Getting ready, Lindsay. Yes. Yes. I'm here. You know, Lindsay, we're a little late starting this morning. Sorry, folks. Be with us. <laughs> Be with us. We need to move on a little bit because we. Sorry, the guys. With Roberto Firmino being back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ten o'clock every Saturday from now on. We're late this morning. We've got new graphics. They took a bit of setting up. But normally 10 o'clock Saturday, Facebook Live, ECC TV. And who knows, eventually we could get a Facebook page, the Copite Church. I'll be working on that much later. But at the moment, we're on ECC TV, Facebook page, live. Then later, will be uploaded to YouTube. Now, today's subject is wisdom's the principal thing over a couple of areas one over the vaccine everybody is seemingly talking about even president trump referred it as the miracle cure we're asking the question mm. is it secondly we'll be dealing with the wisdom of the football season and when it should be and what god is saying Wisdom is the principal thing. Thank you, Lindsay. We'll hear from you later. We are delighted to be back after a short break of the Copite Church. And we're so glad to have our new graphics. And on our first week, we've got the scene of Roberto Firmino being baptized, sharing the stage with us, which is brilliant. It's a wonderful example. The greatest wisdom is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, particularly in these days. And these are complex days. And the Bible says we need to give Jesus the preeminence. Now, Copites know to uphold the ancient landmark. The banners on the cop are amazing. Lindsay and I watched the program on LFC FC about... LFC TV about the banner making, what goes into them. Beneath me, in the middle of our new graphic, is the banner, everything is possible to them that believe. There is such an identity in the Liverpool Football Club with the people of faith. They uphold the ancient landmark. On the cop there is a banner, 1906. The remembrance of the original Copites in the Battle of Spy and Cop giving their lives for their country. Those who gave their lives for their football club at Hillsborough have an eternal flame at the Anfield ground. But we're living in unprecedented times, times where we need to emphasize the wisdom of God. And let me tell you this, the vaccine is not the saviour. Only Jesus Christ is the Savior. And we're looking at Proverbs chapter 4 today. And it's so important what I have to share with you. Verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. It's there running on a scroll above my head in red. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom with all thy getting. Get understanding. Let me tell you this, on our first area of wisdom today, please do not see the vaccine as being the healer. There are many questions about the vaccine. We live in Scotland and we have been sent by the Scottish government. You know, we do not operate here at ECC TV and the Bible College of Wales Original Vision with conspiracy theory. What we say is backed by primary evidence, 
secondary evidence, and most important, the revelation of God. And it is the revelation of God that tells us the vaccine is not the healer. It's the revelation of God that tells us that scientists, their solutions are not the cure. Scientists are disagreed. The Father, the Son, the Spirit, these three are one. And it is wisdom to choose stability. The Copites for years have stood on the ancient landmark. My day on the cop in the 60s and 70s, we'd never even heard of social distancing. On the cop, instead of 12,000 seated in those days, there was about 30,000 standing up, swaying. When one guy got his willy out to have a wee, having been to the Albert pub before getting into the middle of the cop and forgetting to go to the toilet, and then there would be a big gap open to allow him to have have a wee and then the sway would all the way go down to the front of the cop. Those of you who've seen the old pictures will see a big sway, swaying side to side. But when they were going down, somebody's doing his wee wees. <laughs> I remember these days well. We had our own favorite spec. If I could go on the old cop, I would take Lindsay and say, this is exactly where I used to stand. I remember it to this very day. I had a specific place where I stood, as did everybody else. That is, except those just coming out the Alberts who'd had one or two too many. They just needed a way and it had to go somewhere because there was no toilets. You just trust you didn't go home on the bus being more wet than what you should be. So these things were part of our normal life. But they're talking today of a new normal. And we need to have a stability far greater than a vaccine where some sciences are scientists are saying it's good for you. And other scientists and particularly some Christian leaders are saying it is not. It is wisdom to bring these things to your attention. The Scottish government have issued warnings about the vaccine. So what are you talking about? You know, I'm reading all about Bill Gates, about the microchips. I'm not getting involved in any of that. We deal here with what we can prove primarily, secondarily, most important by the revelation of God. It is an absolute fact to tell you that scientists are disagreed over the vaccine. Dr. Mike Yagen has shown great concern about the vaccines, both Pfizer and Oxford. What are his concerns? We need to know. You need to know true the other side. It is wisdom to have a wide understanding. My concern today is the government is not being wise and only telling you one story of one particular side of science. The eminent virologist, Dr. Mike Yadon, has said 70% of people who take the vaccine will experience serious side effects. That's Dr. Mike Yadon. The Scottish government have issued a warning in their leaflet, the COVID-19 vaccine important information. So this is primary evidence from Public Health Scotland. This is not from Alex Jones and Infowars, not from David Icke. I'm not decrying what they've got to say. It has its place. And you need to consider those things. But we here are presenting in a wise format the information required so we can get back to our football matches as normal. And I tell you this, the vaccine is not the answer. I'm going to tell you the answer very, very soon. And it's not in science. It's in a person. Because truth is not a thing, truth is a person. And I'm here to introduce you to this person today. 
And I'm telling you that already the two people we know about who have had the vaccine. Now, this is only a survey of two people. We only know of two people who have had the vaccine. One in Yorkshire, in Huddersfield area, and the other in the Edinburgh area, in Scotland. Both of whom have had serious fevers. Now, you might say, you are scaremongery. No, I'm giving you witness of what two people have had happen to them after taking the vaccine. I can also tell you my mother some years ago on taking a flu vaccine nearly died. And my sister too on taking a flu vaccine had very serious side effects and was very ill indeed. I am giving you facts. I'm not giving you conspiracy theory. This is the truth. And it is in warned about in the Scottish government leaflet about the vaccine. It says some people may experience side effects. Dr. Mike Yadin says the sum of the some people, he says 70% of the people we know who have had it, admittedly only two, it is 100%. And the Scottish government warn of tenderness, swelling or redness at the injection site, headache, muscle ache, feeling tired, and a fever with a temperature above 37.8. The fever is what we heard about over the two people we know. It's not wise for me on this program to go into the conspiracy theories. I leave that to you to make your own mind up. But it is wise to tell you that science is disagreed on the lockdown. Dr. Har Carl Hennigan of Oxford University, Dr. Carol Sikora, spelled K-A-R-O-L, he's a gentleman, of Buckingham uh, University. Also, he was head of cancer care for the World Health Organization. Both are anti-lockdown because it is obvious for all to see mental health is being affected. Cancers are not being dealt with. Heart conditions are not being... There is a much wider view to give. And the wider view in giving it is always the wisdom of God. Man in his natural form is not perfect. Man makes mistakes. The greatest mistake I'm witnessing at this time is presenting the vaccine as being the answer. It is not. The answer lies in a person, not in a science. I believe it has been wise to have social distancing in the respiratory season. I believe it has been wise for pubs and restaurants and places of hospitality to introduce social distancing. But to take away people's livelihoods is not right. To take away the great outlet which so many of us have in relation to the support of a football team is not right to keep Anfield empty for the Man United game is from the devil. Well, Man United call themselves the Red Devils, but this is an even bigger devil than them. People need their outlet. Now, respiratory conditions are very serious. Five times I have had pneumonia. I am not decrying wisdom in relation to social distancing. I'm decrying wisdom in this. I'm 
I'm, I'm decrying the lack of wisdom when it comes to the suppression of the people and the stopping of them going to football matches and other areas of recreation. I believe mental health is being seriously affected by such action. The suicide rate, I know from London, I told you I'm dealing with primary evidence, secondary evidence, most important, the revelation of God. But I hear from the London Ambulance Brigade that suicides are up or attempted suicides, both conditions, are up by 68% since lockdowns. You, government, are not being wise. You are killing more people than who you are saving. The Constitution of Great Britain has a person as the solution for all these things. Yet governments have looked to secular humanism and to science rather than the God of its own constitution. Are you with me now? So we're not being irresponsible. The respiratory season every year brings about deaths. We used to call it flus and pneumonia. Today they simply call everything COVID-19. Now there's talk of COVID-21. And for that, this vaccine will not be the answer. For the answer lies in a person. And that person has given wisdom. And I'm going to suggest this to solve the gathering of crowds to concerts to football matches, rugby matches, whatever they may be. Let us move these events to outside of the respiratory season. For example, rugby league is played from February through to September, I think it is. It would make more sense to have the gatherings outside the respiratory season, leaving aside COVID-19. For many people have died of flus and pneumonias. And close gathering of people. In the old days, there used to be a campaign, coughs and sneezes spread diseases. Let's have more of those campaigns. They are wise. But I tell you this. As a copite that used to stand on the cop in the 60s, 70s, and even 80s. When the goal goes in against Man United, like we trust it will tomorrow. More than one. They deserve a good thrashing, in my view. When the goals go in. <laughs> we didn't really know the person next to us. But as if we knew them all our lives. We used to grab them, jump up and down with them. They even at times used to kiss each other. Look, we can do this safely outside of the respiratory season. I think it's wise now, particularly with the 2022 World Cup being played in the winter, that is the winter in Qatar. So it's a different respiratory season there than what it is here. It would seem wise to welcome everybody back and have the season begin at the beginning of the spring months through into the autumn months before we touch the respiratory season. That way, we're not affecting mental health. And in the build-up to Christmas, in the winter months, keep everywhere open, but with social distancing, perspex screens, and all the rest of us. And then we can look forward to the spring when football starts again and other recreational pursuits. So there are two areas of wisdom I share here. And I believe these to be the wisdom of the Lord and the ultimate wisdom I'm going to give you in just a few moments. When it comes to the vaccine, let it not be seen as the answer for science has various views on its impact. 
COVID-19 is not as serious a condition as it was in the early lockdown. In fact, of only a very small minority die. And the reason why people are in ICUs for longer is that people are getting better where they used to be dying. They're actually recovering in ICUs, but they're needing longer in ICUs. And it's not wise for government to play with figures to lock people down. We need to have the wide aspect view. The reason why the percentage of hospital beds taken is higher than previous years is because they've taken a lot of beds out because of social distancing. You see, we're not being told the whole truth because God, the truth, Jesus Christ, is not in his preeminent position. Lockdown kills more than it saves. So much of science is saying that, including the WHO, uh, Carl Hennigan of Oxford University, uh. Carol Sokola, and many other eminent biologists, bacteriologists, very much enjoyed, and an emeritus uh. professor from Aberdeen University, Henningham, I think his name is, Penningham, a very, very, very wonderful uh, expression of his concerns I enjoyed so much. Look. Science is disagreed. We need to come together in stability on a person with whom we can always agree. Jesus prayed to the Father that we be one, that is those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour. You can see on the screen Roberto Firmino about to acknowledge that he has been a sinner He's been to the cross. And as a symbol of that coming, he's going to be buried with him in baptism, fully immersed. And as Jesus died at the cross to take away our sickness and disease, our sorrows and our griefs, and as we going down in those waters of baptism are a symbol of this, we come up in resurrection power having overcome sickness and disease, which is why in Proverbs 4 we read, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. I'm telling you of the Holy Ghost vaccine today is in a person, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 John 5, 7 reads, the Father, the Word, the Spirit, these three are one and always in agreement. So you have a choice today between scientists who continuously disagree or the Father, the Son and the Spirit who always are one. And when you become born again, you become one in them. And he comes into your life. He renews our minds, takes away the grief, sorrow, sickness and disease and brings us unto him to whom we can always trust because he is the truth. And the truth is the stability, is the wisdom this nation always needs. Lindsay, come and sing the hymn. Twas a life filled with aimless desperation, with how hope marked the shell of a man, then a hand with a nail print stretched downward, just one touch, then a new life began. And this can be you when you come to the old rugged cross. It being this cross that brings about the difference in your life. Lindsay. Amen. Thank you, Dave. That's great. There's nothing to beat wisdom. And we sure do need wisdom in these times we're living in, the wisdom of God. Because only he knows the end from the beginning. And he already died, as Dave has said, 
for all our sicknesses, diseases, sins, and iniquities. And that's why, that's why, I'm to come closer, folks, that's why the old rugged cross made the difference. And this song is about people's real lives and the way so many people are suffering now. Was a life filled with aimless desperation, without hope, walked the shell of a man. Then a hand with a nail print stretched out. Just one touch, then a new life began. And the old rugged rock made the difference. In a life bound for party and
These are real situations today, dear viewers and listeners. There are thousands and millions of people in that same situation you've heard in the song. And all we need, in the words of the famous Beatles song, all you need is love. But love is a person, just as truth is a person. And wisdom is a person. And God is love. And he so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus. That whosoever, as the scripture, as the word of God, the Bible says, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so, thank you for watching this first of a new series of the Copite Church. Remember, every Saturday live on Facebook at 10 o'clock. See you next time. Bye for now. God bless. Bye.